Hey, I'm JP and you are watching Liberty Online. We are currently in lockdown 2.0 here in the UK. So thank you for joining us wherever you are today. In fact, let us know in the comments below where you are. We'd love to know and to say hello. This Sunday, we are bringing you a message from the series, Playing It Safe. So let's get into it and pass over to Pastor Phil. Well, thanks for joining us today on Liberty Online for Playing It Safe week three. And we're here again in the URC church. Thanks to them for letting us use it and uh, for the small team that allow this to happen uh, behind the cameras and behind the sound. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're having a great day. We're in part three of Playing It Safe and we are going to pick up the pace this week. Uh, full steam ahead next week, but we're, we're chugging along nicely. So I'm going to do a quick 10 second recap like I did before. And so essentially what I've said over the last few weeks is most of us play it safe most of the time. We ask the question, should we play it safe? And then last week I said, playing it safe is dangerous. And I finished up by saying perhaps we should stop playing it safe. And if that doesn't make any sense to you at all, then listen to the first week or two on YouTube. So, boom, up to speed in 10 seconds, done. So, part three. Uh, before we get into that, you know me, I like a nice story. And so, talking about playing it safe, talking about dangerous things. Some of you know, if you know me well um, at home, I like dangerous sports. I draw the line at like, riding a bull or something like that. But I like dangerous sports, and uh, I'm not a play-it-safe kind of guy when it comes to sports. I'd spent 21 years or something like that playing rugby, you know, one of the most, probably one of the most dangerous sports uh, that you can play. And I gave it up a few years ago, um, waited a few years and then started MMA, which is, um, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, when COVID's finished, I'm probably going to go back. So that's my sort of... Uh, rationale with sport should be dangerous if there's no blood it's not a sport and so but during my rugby days um we're in a stage when our club was in decline let's say it that way we were moving down the leagues we weren't doing quite as well uh, we had a lot of players go into retirement and they finished playing we had a few who had major injuries and so our team was getting weaker weaker we had a few go to prison and so we had lots and lots of people leave the club who were good quality players and then we struggled to to maintain the standard and so over the years we went down the leagues and and to be honest it wasn't too big a deal because it was it was it was less sort of energy you had to put in it was easier but it was fun and so I still like playing but sometimes you'd play friendly games and um and the opposition would arrive. It's not an important game. It's not a league or a cup or anything like that. Just a friendly uh, game. And, and the opposition would arrive with like 13 players. And, and then we're talking about rugby union here, not rugby league. So that you're supposed to have 15 players. And so some teams would arrive with only 13 because they couldn't get enough people to play. And so sometimes we'd have a sub or two. And uh, so sometimes we'd have 16 players, a player on the bench maybe. And so what you'd happen, because it was a friendly and we wanted to play a game of rugby, is we'd say, you can have our, our sub and we'd play, they, they'd play for your team. And so um, they'd go on the other team. So it was like 14 on the opposition and 15 on our team. And when that would happen, it, and it happened quite regularly, I would always volunteer. I'm like, I want to play on the other team. I want to play, I'd rather play with a team that had less players. I'd rather play for the opposition and play with less players. Because, like, for me, that's a real victory. Like, if, you, if you're playing on a team with more players, like, you should win, shouldn't you? And yet, when you're playing with less players, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer, I'll go on their team. And sometimes I couldn't because of the position I played, but sometimes I couldn't. I used to love it. And honestly, I, I loved playing it, not just because of the difference in numbers, but I loved playing against my teammates. I loved it. I liked winding them up. <laughs> and because I knew all their weaknesses and what they were good or bad at, I used to be quite tactical and try and, and play to them weaknesses and, and really wind them up. So, but I wasn't playing it safe because, can I tell you, it's really dangerous when you're playing against players who know you, when you've volunteered to go on the opposition, because can I tell you, they all want to smash you. <laughs> Every single one of them is looking for you all the time. But I love that. I like playing it, uh, not, not playing it safe. And so it was extra dangerous, but extra fun as well. And it reminded me of this scripture when, when some guys were battling with, with a man down, more than a man down, but with less men. It's in, in Judges. And we, uh, we, we sort of see in Judges 6 and 7, this dude 
Gideon and, and the Israelites had been dominated for, for years. And if you know the story that the Midianites have been dominating them for, for years and years and years. And God shows up to this dude Gideon and says, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. And, um, and he told him to go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. He says, I am sending you. And, and, and you might remember that Gideon said, how? <laughs> He's like, how am I going to do this? Because I'm the weakest in my clan, in the whole tribe, and, and I'm, or my, my clan's the weakest, and I'm the, I'm the least in my family within that tribe. And the Lord said to him, I will be with you, and I will destroy the Midianites. So we'll pick this story up in Judges 7 from verse 2, and it says this. Let's read. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. No one's ever said that in a battle. <laughs> we got too many fighters. But God said to, to Gideon, because they had tens of thousands of men, he said, you've got too many guys. So it says, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. Verse 3 says, therefore, tell the people, whoever's timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. And I'll bet there was loads of people like, yep, I'll go home. Maybe you'd be one of them people. It says so 22,000 of them went home, leaving only, only 10,000. So there was 32,000 men, and over two-thirds of them said, see you later, Gideon, because you as a weakling, I don't want to go with you. Leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Verse 4 says, but the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring, and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. You're going to test them, are you? You're going to do all right obstacle courses and one-on-one -on -one battles. No, nope. it says this in verse 5. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. In one group, put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up like a dog. Who drinks like that? In the other group, put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Now, some of you might think, well, that sounds more like a dog because dogs don't have hands. But the, the point is they were laughing it up with their tongue out of their, out of their hand. Where other guys, I think I would do this, just shove their face in the stream <laughs> and let the, let the water rush into their mouth. Much easier, get more in quicker. And so it says this in verse 6, only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All of the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. And the Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So 300 dogs <laughs> to go to battle against, we don't know how many, just ridiculous numbers. And I want you to think about this. Talk about not playing it safe. If I was Gideon, you know, he already wasn't very comfortable with doing it himself because he didn't think much of himself. But I'd have been, are you kidding, God, 300? But Gideon knew whose team he was on. Gideon knew whose team he was on. And he, he divided the, the 300 men, he agreed. He divided the 300 men into three groups. And they all had a ram's horn and a clay jar with a, with a torch in it. And, uh, and at midnight, they surrounded the camp on three sides. And, uh, uh, and they blew their horns all together and they lit their torch and they all screamed. Aah! You know, it was like a brave heart moment. And in that moment, the Midianites panicked and they started fighting against each other. And uh, those who weren't killed by themselves <laughs> actually fled away. And, and for me, reading this story, and it's, it's a really rich story, and I, and I, couldn't, I didn't have time to, to go into it in detail, but the take home for me is that God can and will lead you into danger. Just like he did Gideon, he'll lead you into things that you're not comfortable with. He'll lead you in places where you can suffer loss. He'll lead you into danger to tell you to not play it safe. And he'll lead you even into fights that are too big for you. Imagine the feeling of them guys. You know, some of them must have been a bit crazy, I reckon, thinking, yeah, 300 of us, we can do it. Uh, ever seen the movie 300? Great movie. <laughs> it's not based off this battle, actually. But... God will lead us into things that are too big for us to fight. We can't actually win that fight. And the good news, just like with Gideon, he will fight on your behalf. I think God leads us to not play it safe so he can fight on our behalf. And I want you to think about this. When you play on God's team, it may feel like you're not playing it safe. 
But God's way is the safest option. It might feel in the natural you're not playing it safe, but it is the safest option. And so if, like we said last week, uh, last week, if playing it safe is dangerous in our normal everyday life, because we don't gain anything, if we don't risk anything, if playing it safe is dangerous, then I want to say playing it God's way is safe. Playing it God's way is safe, even when it is actually dangerous in the natural. And just like my rugby example, you know, I liked playing on the opposition, being a man down. It was fun. But the years of following Jesus, I'd, I've come to learn, I would rather play on a team of 300 with God calling the plays than on an army of tens of thousands against the creator of the universe. <laughs> He's got the playbook. And God asked Gideon not to play it safe in the natural, from the outside, from what he would feel. He, got, he asked him, in fact, he commanded him not to play it safe. Going into a battle that there was no way he could win. There was just no way this, this dude could win in the natural. And I think it's because it gives God the room to work, like it said in that scripture. Otherwise, you're going to boast about what you can do in your own strength. And it's a God has room to work, to show up, to rescue you. So I want to say this. If you really want to play it safe, play on God's team. If you really want to play it safe, and I mean really playing it safe in the bigger aspect, not just in the natural, play on God's team. And why do I say that? Because of things that are written in Scripture like Luke 4, 10. It says, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. I love that idea that I've got bodyguards of angels all around me. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, or the way I like to say it, 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, it says this, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you. In Psalm 91, 1 or 2, it says, he is my refuge and my fortress and my strong tower. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of need or in times of trouble. And so really what I'm boiling this down to is, this is what I think is he is our safety. He is our safety. He is actually how we play it safe. For those who really feel that need to play it safe in life, in reality, he is actually how we play it safe, following him. Scripture says about him being our refuge, our, our strong tower. He is our safety, not our circumstance. Because what we try and do in our life is build our life and control our circumstances and choices so our actual environment is safe. Where God says, even when that's not so, he is your safety. He is your refuge. He is your strong uh, tower, not your circumstance. So I want you to think about this. Circumstance is not your refuge. And even this, not even refuge is your refuge. In the natural, you know, people could have locked themselves in, in a war situation, could have locked themselves in a big tower on the top of a hill. And God would tell them, that's not your refuge. Even though it is refuge, that isn't even refuge. Refuge isn't even refuge. I am your refuge. I am your safety. And there's a great picture in Scripture that says, we are pressed on every side, but not crushed. I love that Scripture, being pressed on every single side. But he is our protection. He is our strong tower. He is our safety, so we're not crushed. And so perhaps, just perhaps, we, me, you, you sat at home, are called to live right in the middle of danger, whatever that looks like in our culture, to not be safe, but to be willing to go wherever he calls us, knowing he is our safety. And so to finish this short message, I think if you really want to play it safe, you need to play on God's team, whatever that looks like to you. Even when that looks like the most unsafe option in the natural. Because <laughs> I think playing it safe, or playing it God's way, sorry, is in the long run the safest option. So I want to say this, my bottom line for today is stop playing it safe and play it God's way. Stop playing it safe and play it God's way. And I want to finish with asking you a question. Which air of your life do you keep shying away from following his lead into danger? Which air of your life do you, do you stop <laughs> letting him lead you into areas where you're uncomfortable, where you're fearful? Which air of your life 
Are you playing it safe in relationships, whether that's romantic relationships in your, with a spouse or with a friendship or whether in your career or building church or ministry or whether with your finances, with giving money away out of yourself to, to help others or whether that's taking steps of faith towards something God's put in your heart, a dream or something for you to build. What are you playing it safe with? Because I want to encourage you, wherever he's leading you, wherever that is, not to play it safe, but to stop playing it safe and play it God's way. Amen. Thank you, Phil. And just to let you guys into a secret, it's Pastor Phil's birthday this Sunday. So make sure to send him lots of love on his lockdown birthday. We hope he has a great day despite this and we hope you have a good week too. See you online next week.